Are we saying there's a chance that when we push that button, we destroy the world? Chances are near zero. Near zero. What do you want from theory alone? Zero would be nice. It's one of the most anticipated films of the year. Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer opens this week in theaters nationwide, bringing a new perspective on the mad dash to build and use the world's first nuclear weapons. And the story cannot be told without recognizing contributions made here in Wisconsin. Daniela Cato went in search of that local history and didn't have to go very far to find it. The all-shattering devastation in which was born the atomic age. In its birth pangs, 75,000 people were killed. Without the unconditional surrender of Japan, they were going to be used. I deem this reply a full acceptance of the Potsdam Declaration, which specifies the unconditional surrender of Japan. The end of World War II brought upon the nuclear age. The atomic bomb became the single most important development that's altered mankind. Oppenheimer himself was shocked at, at what had really happened. Steve Schaffer is the lead archivist at the Milwaukee Historical Society. Here's another one of, of Holly Road. He says many don't know how big a role Milwaukee played in what was then called the Manhattan District Project, secret research and activity that took place in West Alice at the Alice Chalmers Corporation. Alice Chalmers was considered one of the leading um, manufacturers in the country. The company made everything from giant turbines for power plants to the more familiar orange tractors. But during wartime, things changed. Just like manufacturers across the country, Alice Chalmers turned their efforts to war production, making engines, gun systems and electrical controls for ships, among other things. But for the Manhattan Project, special considerations were needed. In 1942, the government was in a mad dash to build facilities needed to make the first atomic bomb. Some of them, like the Holly Road plant here in West Alice, are still standing today, and it just so happens to be the home of our CBS 58 studios. It was an incredibly fast construction, 70 days for a plant like this. The Holly Road plant was built under contract in 1942 with the U.S. Navy employing more than 35,000 workers by 1943. Practically every household either had someone working at the plant or knew someone that worked at the plant. These are all the annual reports. At one point, it was the largest employer in the state of Wisconsin. Devin Gracialny, the president of the West Alice Historical Society, says even then, the production of the atomic bomb was one of the best kept secrets of the war. Extremely top secret. It was so secret that the people that worked in the plant had no idea what they were doing. And I don't believe the owners of the plant or the city itself had any information that the particular manufacturing that they were doing was for the Department of Defense. It wasn't until years later that the company revealed they were processing uranium at other plants and researching parts to be used in the world's first nuclear weapons. Let there be no mistake. We shall completely destroy Japan's power to make war. At the Holly plant specifically, they used silver to wind coils that were used to produce highly enriched uranium, among other research and development. Primarily, they worked with heavy electromagnetic equipment that would generate fields to smash atoms, separate plutonium from uranium. And specifically for the Holly plant, they designed centrifugal pumps that were experimental at the time because none of this had ever been done before. Alice Chalmers produced more equipment by weight for the Manhattan Project to develop the atomic bomb than any other company, at one point even hosting the president himself. President Roosevelt obviously knew about the project that was going on, the research in that, but even his vice president had no knowledge of the Manhattan Project until after he became president. Here and there, an isolated structure reminds the onlooker that here was once a city. Schaffer says the aftermath of what happened to the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki in 1945 is something later generations think more about than the people did at the time. My dad was a World War II veteran. He served in the Pacific. He was home um, on furlough to get married in August of 45. While he was here getting married, both bombs dropped 
and he said that he was never more thankful in his life that they used the bombs and that he didn't have to go back. Although we were proud at the time of doing that, now we're kind of second guessing if that really should have been developed and then used. The topic remains controversial, but Gracie Olney says he hopes the humanity aspect continues to be at the forefront of massive global decisions like this one moving forward. We'll still persevere and prevail even though these can be used for significantly powerful weapons that could destroy uh, the world, I have this optimistic feeling that it's not going to.